Hi, welcome to Fiber Loaf Diary. <laughs> oh my gosh, the table's a mess again. <laughs> oh, at my fiber arts. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. Sometimes I'm like so old that I want to go, welcome back. But some of you wouldn't even know what that's from. And is that bad? Am I allowed to do that? I don't even know. I did it just the one time. I'll never do it again if I'm not supposed to, because I'm sure it's copywritten or whatever. This is the channel where I document my fiber arts obsession. So, Everything wool, alpaca, silk, bamboo, what else? If you can name it, I'm probably trying to spin it. So hi, how are you? It's June. We were actually in the pool this weekend. What? And I think today it's going to be in the high 70s, but it was in the 80s all weekend. Summer is basically here for Michigan. We just have to call it summer as soon as we can. <laughs> it's short it's so short but on the calendar it's just the end of spring and the end of spring means something to all of us spinners a lot of us spinners maybe not all the end of spring means raw fleeces galore i did buy a couple this year they're actually in the trunk of my car because i'm gonna run out to the mill that is like three miles from me did i tell you there's a mill three miles from me I did tell you that, <laughs> but it was like a year and a half ago. They're growing, they're doing great. I feel like he's meticulous, so the work is really good and I don't feel nervous about bringing fleeces to them, even really fine ones, which I am bringing, and I'm bringing quite a dirty one. But you know what, I'm at the point where I'm worried I can't get it all done and I just have to try to like trust him and let him do his thing. So when they're all back, I promise you, I will show you all of them. There's actually a bunch in there that I'm sh totally hoping will turn out because as long as they do, I would like to work on a project here, maybe with you guys and do like a short series together. We'll see. Um, it all depends right now on how the fleeces come out. I don't know, just cross your fingers, I guess. So again, raw fleece. I've been seeing a lot of comments and a lot of messages saying you guys <laughs> were inspired to buy your first raw fleeces this year. Whoa, I love it. I love that. And I think it's really brave, kind of in celebration of that and maybe to help everybody feel like they can just jump in. Cause you can just jump in, you know. I thought I would do this video. So you really don't need a lot of tools to do this. You need like a bucket or a big bowl or something to wash in. I don't like to wash directly in my tub or my sink because then I just have to clean my tub or my sink and I don't want to have to do that. So I wash in an old, uh, I can't remember how many gallon wash tub. I think it might be a five gallon wash tub. It's pretty heavy when it's full of water. It's galvanized. Actually, there's a video on this that I will link below. This is the same method that I'm gonna link that I use for pretty much every fleece. Okay, the only thing that I do differently ever is if the fleece is extremely greasy or extremely dirty, I might do more washes. I do wait until the rinse water is pretty much clear, so I may or may not do more or less rinses, and it's all based on like what is coming out as I'm washing it, which makes sense, right? I mean, if it looks pretty clean after the first wash, you're not gonna do a second wash, and there are fleeces that are like that. But if you do a second wash and you're still getting tons of dirt and even some like lanolin, which you can tell the difference after you've done it for a while, you might want to do a third wash. I always feel like I'd rather wash it an extra time than rinse it, let it dry, and then find out I have to wash it again because that's a lot of time that you lost, especially the drying time. An extra wash takes like a half an hour at the most and a whole extra cycle through the washing, rinsing, and drying takes like a whole day. So I'd rather wash it one more time. 
So this is raw merino. It's from a fleece I got last year that still isn't all washed. I'm just telling you the truth. Um, we, I did unbox it on this channel. And I did buy another fleece from the same seller that is going to the mill. It's in my car right now. Then I also have some thin from the fleece I opened back in like March from Donna Putnam. I don't have any of that raw anymore. I've washed the whole fleece. So just to give you guys a frame of reference of what it looks like, it's washed and it's dry, okay? I do not separate locks. Some people do, that is not wrong. I mean, no way that you do that works for you is wrong. But I just don't do that. Um, for me, well, I'm gonna take locks out of the, the washed fleeces. And for me, the time separating all the raw locks, I, I don't feel like I'm saving myself enough time later to make it worth it. But that is not wrong. It's totally fine to do that. And honestly, if you were gonna spin certain things, it might be hell. I can't think of anything. But some people like it that way, and that is not a wrong way to do it. So if you feel like you wanna try that, it is, you know, it's just a different way of doing it, but not wrong. And then here is some of the Merino washed. So, and this is partly why I wanted to show you guys this. So, all right, let me show you both sides of the dirty Merino. Okay, so this is the cut side. This, coming in close now, this is the tip side, and some of it's pretty dirty. I don't know if you'll be able to really see it well or not. I'm doing my best. After it's washed, and I did nothing else to this, unless I may have given it a shake outside after it was washed. But, um, so this is washed. This is the, this is the cut side, washed. Actually, you can see a little bit of both sides. And this is what the tip side looks like washed. So. If you, I mean, when it's normal when you wash these to still see a little different coloration on the tips. And some people will like reach in and kind of like agitate the tips just a little bit. I don't do that on a fine fleece. I actually don't do that. <laughs> if the tips are super disgusting, I will flick them first to open them up enough to let them release like dirt and everything that gets stuck in there. I don't do that very often. But again, what is, works for you is cool. It's not wrong. It does not matter if you're like, I don't wanna do, it doesn't matter. Do however you wanna do it. Check out everybody's method because you can get bits and pieces that'll work for you from everybody. So we're gonna do three methods. The first method is spinning from the cloud with no tools. So there are variations you can do on all these methods. But if you have a fleece that has very dirty tips, this isn't one. But if you have one that has very dirty tips, you can still spin from the cloud after just flicking the tips out a little bit. And so spinning from the cloud can be done before flicking or after flicking. I'm trying to show what can be done with like basically no tools or just a flicker or a dog brush. They're interchangeable in this case. I did not use any, but you can. So don't feel like, well, if I'm gonna spin from the cloud, I can't touch it with tools. Okay, so that's number one method. And there are, again, many variations. So whatever your fleece calls for, whatever you need to do to get the yarn you like, that's what you should do. During the breed study, we talked about a lot of different ways to spin because the Fleece and Fiber source book gave like recommendations on how to spin each breed. Some of them, you guys have questions about like, what does this mean, what does that mean, what does this mean? So the second one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do flicked, I'm gonna spin from flicked locks. I have done this once before on the channel. I will link that below. Also, I did a whole sweater from a Rambouillet fleece that I still have not even knitted. Oh, but all the yarn is done, the entire fleece is done, and it is so beautiful. Every once in a while I look at it in my yarn stash and I'm like, I gotta get to you. <laughs> but we all do that, don't we? It's a little bit of a hybrid between lock spinning and spinning from the cloud because I do allow them to pull apart and separate while I'm drafting a bit. 
I made swatches too so that you could see them all, but just my opinion, this is, and it's only an opinion. It means literally nothing and it's worth exactly what you're paying for it, which you're, you're not paying for this. You shouldn't be paying for this because it is free on YouTube. My personal opinion is that the last one would be much better in weaving because of all the texture. But I mean, sometimes you do want to knit with a ton of texture. So it's not like you should never knit it. I just, in my mind, I can just see this a little bit thicker, very textured yarn just being so cool in your weaving. I'm not saying it's only good for weaving, but I think for weaving, it would be even better. And I did it from both of these different fleeces just so you could kind of get some idea like what does it look from like from a white one and then what does it look like from one that has bleach tips and the multicolor because this is going to change your yarn and it isn't a bad thing it's cool but you're going to get something a totally th different and you're going to be able to kind of see the configuration better because you'll see the color changes in the yarn all right, I'm gonna just spin from the cloud a little bit. This is one way to do spinning from a fleece with zero, pro zero tools. So um, this is washed, it's thin. It is really good candidate for this because it doesn't have any VM. I mean, it's, it's very, very low in VM. And also the locks, the tips, I'm gonna show you. The tips of these locks are very clean. See, I said it has no VM. I was lying. It has very little. Um, if you just pull these apart, see how they, this just up, tap, up at the tip, it just literally just drifts right apart. See that? And you don't get anything stuck together. Because sometimes you'll get a fleece and even after you wash it, the tips are like kind of stuck together. Those aren't necessarily like you can't do it, but they're a little harder to do this with. And this is going to give you a little more texture than like other more prepped yarns, but sometimes you want more texture, right? So you take a lock, all my tips are up here, and you just take it and pull, hold on to it with your, and my. in this case it's my left hand, and then my right hand I pull from the side and pull them off, but I don't pull them, I pull them off the big chunk, but I don't pull them completely loose. And see how it's just falling down here away. See that? So I'm gonna do the whole thing. Okay, and here's a little shortcut. They happen, guys, not a big deal, but while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna pull this out. So I pulled all the locks apart. And then this is what I have. I've been spinning some already, so I'm just gonna take it. You literally can just hold this little wisp right here that I didn't spin up against one part of it and draft a little and then it will just catch as you're spinning. See? And then I just hold with my right hand super loosely. I mean, I'm, you could literally just grab this away from me very easily and draft with my left. Of course, it doesn't matter which hand you, you know, do which with. All right, so here's my singles, and you can see all the tan tips that got sunburnt are kind of hung together and causing like these little tan spots in the gray. It's so cool. I'm gonna quick ply this and knit a little swatch so you can see what it looks like all knitted up. Okay, so like I said, it's gonna have a lot more texture. And this is that spun from the cloud plied. 
This is the same fleece. I'm gonna show a different method. And then I'm gonna use one tool. It is a flicker brush. You can find these actually for dogs. Usually for dogs, they have shorter teeth, but they will still work. You'll just have to clean out whatever you're pulling out a little more often. What I do is grab some by the tips. You can see that's the best way to see the lock formation is all these tips in here. So I grab some by the tips and pull it off. Usually when I do that, it's pretty easy to see everything. There's some VM in here. There is a little piece of something there and there is actually somewhere else I saw some more. Generally, I'll do this with a towel in my lap or I'll do it outside because a lot of stuff is gonna come out of here. So I'll hold it by the tips first. All the tips are in my fingers. And then I like smooth it and grab the butts. I go kind of as low as I can and make sure I'm holding everything. And then you twist, okay? You can twist twice if you have a bit of fleece that's harder to hang on to. That will help you hold on to the whole entire lock. Then you just take a flicker brush. It just kind of depends on how how tangled the ends are, how whatever, but you just flick them out like that. And then usually what I do is twist one more time and get the other side. But by that time, usually there's like very little left. And then I will smooth it the other way, switch hands and grab, you just gotta make sure you have less than half really, and then twist again and do the other end. Usually that end is much easier. You get every bit of VM out, and if there's any shortcuts or anything brittle, it'll come right out. So now I'm gonna do just a couple of handfuls of these. Now I have 10 little bundles all flicked out. I'm just gonna take one little bundle of locks. That's what I've got right here. And you can sp go ahead and draft either from the tip or the butt, it doesn't matter. So I usually just hold it really loosely in my right hand because I draft with my left. I am going to take this flicked little bundle, this is the whole little bundle of locks, just like it is, hold it really loosely in my right hand. You can spin however you want. I would just suggest you try from the butt and the tip to see how you like it better. I usually like the tip better, kind of depends on the fleece. And then I will just draft it right out of that little bundle. I've got my tension too tight. This should be a much smoother yarn. This method is more like lock spinning. People do this a lot. A lot of people love this kind of really textury yarn. Okay, I'm just gonna pull some locks apart. See this little lock? I'm just gonna literally pull them out. Um, and I always pull by the tips because the tips seem to stay intact more when you wash than the butt ends do. Okay, so I'm just pulling some locks straight out of here. So I'm just gonna lay them on my towel on my lap, all the separated out locks. This yarn's gonna be very textured. It's not gonna be for everybody, but if you have a fleece, this one is really fine and soft and long, but it looks rustic. So I think it will look really cool and be very wearable because the fleece itself is so nice and soft. So we got a pretty decent pile. So I am gonna slow myself down because this kind of yarn is better with less twist. You just want enough twist to hold it together. And I'm like gonna just grab a handful of these locks. So I'm gonna take one. All right, so I just have the handful of the locks and I'm putting some twist in one and I'm letting it just grab Another one, and I'm drafting just a little bit. Okay. So 
So I'm making myself treadle a little bit more slowly and I'm just literally letting it grab lock after lock, however it wants to grab. More of an art yarn. Personally, I think if you're a weaver, this yarn is super cool because it has so much texture in it. All right, so here, this is the lock, the stuff spun straight out of the locks. And you can see that you get some different texture with, I mean, it's thick and thin on purpose. You get these little spots where the colors change. They're just really neat. So I'm gonna apply this and I am gonna do a small swatch with this. I won't have enough to do a big swatch. And then I'm gonna show you all the swatches. Can you believe you can do all that with basically no tools i mean you do you might need a dog brush or a flicker brush even the flicker brushes are very affordable there's probably a few of you who are like come on trish you have all the tools i do have all the tools i love the tools i like to be able to process a lot really quickly i mean i'm not against tools but i also think if you're just starting out and you don't feel like you want to buy an expensive drum carter or even like more expensive combs i mean combs are not cheap um, this is just a good way to start. So, let's look at the finished products. All right, so this is the spun from the cloud. This, that. This is the swatch, I'm gonna turn it around, with the spun from the cloud. So you can see it is a little bit more heathered. It's heathered, but it's still heathered in a I don't know, more coarse pattern isn't the right word, but this sample is would make the most beautiful sweater. I would love this sweater. I might even make this sweater, we'll see. Again, this one is so springy and like, oh, it would make a gorgeous sweater i mean i could dye these locks and spin them from the clouds and just have the prettiest sweater so i was really happy with how these turned out considering that merino has a good amount of em in it it's not bad for a merino it's actually pretty good but their their fleeces really hold on to tiny little specks but when you pull it into the cloud and then when you spin it again little bits of it just fly out so it sounds disgusting it is i mean spin on top of something <laughs> truly put a canvas under your wheel if you can all right so here is the sample of the fin spun from the flicked locks it is definitely more even i mean you can see that very clearly and even the heathering there's a gus hair on it wait let me take the gus hair off even the heathering is a lot more even but is that not gorgeous i am totally wait let me put my hand behind it because my face is reflecting look how gorgeous that is i am kind of loving it and feeling like it would be worth doing for that fleece it's a little slower than carding um but i just love to like go sit listen to a book sitting outside and just flicking those locks and I'll just throw them in a paper bag and spin them one after another. Or like if we're watching TV, maybe I'll do that. Again, I put something in my lap like I did in the video. It's very relaxing and weirdly satisfying to make those locks look so pretty. And so this is the kind of hybrid lock cloud spin that I did last. And I think, again, this is gonna be way more rustic but sometimes this is totally what you want 
is just a way more rustic yarn. It does end up thicker when I do it. Um, I mean, I could have done it thinner, I guess. But, I mean, tell me that's not super cozy. And if you wanted to make a blanket like this, oh my goodness. So good. This is the pearl side of that swatch. It's just very, very like wooly. I really think this would make an awesome blanket. And you can see some of the tips sticking out. That's, this is what I'm saying. Like if you were weaving with this, well, and look at this and this tail too. If you were weaving with this, you would just get so much texture out of it. It would be just really awesome. And then here is the, I don't have leftover yarn for this one because I just didn't even do enough. But here is the Merino one even. So that swatch again is just more rustic and thicker. I mean, you can totally see and like, I'm gonna show you the tail. See how you get like the thick and thin, but you also get the knobbly bits. It is harder to get VM out. You can see just a little bit in this swatch. That doesn't really bother me when I process a fleece, but if it bothers you, you know, behave accordingly. All of them are very respectable outcomes, you know, and a lot of it has to do with like how you want your yarn to turn out, what you're gonna use your finished project for. Thank you for joining me for this. It was so much fun. I love processing with minimal tools. I know it doesn't seem like it because whenever a new tool is out, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I get that from my dad. My dad's always been like that. And actually next weekend, my dad's turning 80 and we're going for his birthday party. So thanks dad. <laughs> so thanks for joining me for this. I'm so happy to see you guys. And I know I did take last week off after that wedding. I was just like, oh, plus we're doing a lot with the pool. We're doing a lot in our yard. And I told you guys there's some renovations happening in our house and like they're moving along. So there's just so much going on at my house. Whew. It's good. Nothing's like bad or stressful or frustrating. Like last year we had the um, flooding and that was awful. <laughs> Remember that? But it's, it's been really busy and I just have been trying to get on top of things, I guess. You know, as soon as I get on top of one thing, I realize that I've slid off of something else. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. I'm so glad to see you. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks. I love you. Bye.